Okay, so we're back here with uh, Shabbos Kodesh, or Shimshon Pincus, and we are on page in the English, page 95, in the Hebrew, page Ayin Ches. And uh, this chapter is called Limud HaTorah B'Shabbos, the importance of study of Torah on Shabbos. Haneshama Leneshama Shal Shabbos Museget Aidei Limud Musech Shabbos. Uh, the soul to soul of Shabbos is obtain, attained through study of the cha- tractate Mesech Shabbos. If you're studying Mishnah Yomi, you're now in the middle of Mesech Shabbos, which some people have discovered to their chagrin is not that much about Shabbos. It's a lot of carrying different measurements of different items, like how much salt can you carry and how much uh, glue can you carry and, uh, and sawdust and things like that. And anyway, so yeah, yeah. So it's a uh, but we'll, we'll, uh, we will return back to uh, the rest of Hilda Shabbos soon enough. Or Hamoed Tamun Bitorato, that the light of the occasion of the holiday of the day is buried, is, is found hidden within the Torah of Shabbos. The Madrash tells us, Amar Rabbi, Rabbi, Amar Rabbi Hudor Simon, um, Osa Haora Shenivra Ba Haolam, the light with which the world was created, Adam Harishon Ahmad Behibit Ba Musofa Olam Ve'ad Sofo. That Adam looked in, and this is a, a sort of Kabbalistic, or what, what this means is a little bit difficult to understand, that he stood and he stared from one end of the world to the other. Right? That he cleared, it's because there were no skyscrapers. He was able to see clearly from one side of the world to the other. What did that mean? Keban Shiro, Karsparachu Maise. Dor Enosh, Masa Dor Hamabul. Once God showed him all of history, He showed him the actions of the generation of Enosh, of uh, the generation of the flood, right? Idolatry, the flood, the rebellion against God, um, Dor Haflaga, the Tower of Babel, Shen Nikul Kalim, which were so wayward and so backwards. Amad Venig Ve Gana Ve, it says here, Ginzo Mehem. And Hashem then took the light and hid it away from mankind. Shinemar, Vayim no Mershaim Oram, that he withheld from the evildoers the light. The Lama Ganzu, why did he hide the light away? Elaganzu Litzadikim Lasi Lavo. So there was a special access of a light that was given to Adam and Chav in the beginning of time when they when Adam was shown. What would happen and who would have access to this? Imagine like you're giving them like a secret superpower, right? A light, access to something very special. When he saw who would have access to it, he hid it away. And hid it away for Sadiqim who would come later and would know how to enjoy the benefits of this great light. And that's the, that's the Medrash. We know, by the way, there's an idea from Rapinchas of Koritz one of the Hasidic masters, that Adam and Chava were in the Gan Eden for supposedly for 36 hours. In other words, in terms of when they were born, to the time they were ousted, total of 36 hours. And so the exposure to that light was 36, right? whatever that means. Very short time. Yeah. Right? By Motzei Shabbos, it's already dark for them for the first time. They don't know what to do and they panic. And that's when they create light, they rub sticks and rocks together and Light, and that's why we do that in Motsu Shabbos also. But that exposure to light was 36 hours, and 36 is the number of that which is hidden. The Gemara in Sukkah says, Darshan is the word Lutza Dikim. And Rabbi Shimbar Yochai and Rabbi Lazar said that the world, if it only had people like us, it'd be enough. We are the hidden righteous people in the generation. And the notion that there are Lutza Dikim, Lamed Vav Tzadikim in every generation. And the Gemara gives us this concept, which was then taken to a whole new level by the Sifra Hasidus, hundreds, uh, you know, a thousand years later. And that is that in every generation, there are 36 hidden righteous people, right? In the Hasidic world, the notion is that they're the most deplorable and most repulsive individuals, the people you'd never suspect are really righteous. And that only if you are special can you see the goodness in them. That's sort of like what the Svarim write about. But these are the hidden Sadiqim, um, and that they keep the world afloat. Um, the Bnei Saska writes that 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 light of the 36 hours was hidden away for the tzaddikim, that it is rediscovered. Obviously, we're going to talk about it, gaining access to it on Shabbos. 
but they write that that's Hanukkah is the time that we get it. That's why how many candles we let in Hanukkah. So a box of candles comes with 44 minus the Shalash, we have 36. 36 lights on Hanukkah from start to finish. And if you look at the um, if you look at the uh, the words in the Torah, Ner, or and Meorah, candle, light, and illumination, you count up how many times those words appear, they appear 36 times in the Torah. Yeah. And um, Kislev means the covered Lamed Vav. Kislev, the covered 36. Yeah. So this is an idea from the Bnei Saskar on Tfi um, Ale Melech Dinov on the hidden lights that we are about to uncover on Hanukkah. So anyway, that's a digression. But Muva Od Bisfar Makadoshim Sheosa Or Ganuz That light was actually hidden not just on Hanukkah, but it was hidden to be uncovered as part of the various holidays. Right? So each holiday brings us a special um, it could be a, an ethic, a value, a light, something of truth that we're supposed to access on that holiday and bring out and then come, come in contact with it. Bizman HaMoed, who porates hachutza in the holiday, it, 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 it shines out. And it lights with a, with a, a special, it illuminates the special ore of preciousness in the soul of man. That's why they're called good days. Yom Tov, or Yom Tov in Yiddish. Al Shem Oso Or Alav Nemar Vayar Alakim Esa Or Kitov. Because the original light is described in the Torah as what? Tov. As good. So light, so that Kedusha, the hidden Kedusha is considered as goodness, purity in the world. And since then, since the Eitz Adas Tov Everything else in the world is mixed between tovera. It's a little bit good and bad. I mean, some things have a lot of good in them, but a little bit of bad. Some things have a lot of bad in them, but a little good in them, right? So that's, it's confusing. But there's only one thing that's not, has no bad in it, and that would be the tov, the hidden light, which is all purity. Right? There's no, there's no edge. There's no agenda. There's no, there's no manipulation behind it. There's no selfishness in it. There's no jealousy and there's no kina and there's no sinna and there's no, Tavon, there's not all those values that sort of every time you go and volunteer right in the soup kit, soup kitchen, right? The, the food pantry. So part of it is like, okay, like I'm volunteering in the food pantry, right? There's a little bit of me, right? There's a little bit of that. Like I did something good. So that purity of all goodness of Tov was hidden away. And with the chait of Adam and Chava, when they took from the it's dust Tov and Ra, Tov and Ra are mixed in. So everything else in the world is confused. It's a bilbo, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mixture of values. The only pure good was, was sent away. Her good was banished. But we revisit it, as we said on Hanukkah, and all of the holidays which contain a little piece of that pure truth. Right. By the way, when else do we have chesed? We have MS, pure truth. Is the chesed shal MS the only pure act you can ever perform, which is burying someone, right? Unless you hated them, then that's not a pure act anymore. <laughs> then, then it gives you pleasure to bury them. What? To tar, right? Because it's a chesed that can't be repaid. So that's that's pure light, right? So whenever you kind of question internally, you want to look at your motivations. That's an that's an act of pure of purification. That's an act of refinement. To refine one's midos means to try to find the motivations behind what you're doing and say, wait, why am I doing this? What what is what is compelling me? Okay. So, so in the Mishum Kach Nikra Modem Yom Tovim, Al Shem Osa Or Alav Namar Vayal Kimisa Or Kitov, Vusharim Osa Shana, the rest of the year, Ganus Haor Betorat Hakadosh. It was hidden away in the Torah Hakadosh of Benir Mazadibra Chazam. So, also the Torah contains the hidden light. You do him Harbe Maisim, Al Shel Al Gedola Yisrael, Ashemikor Torosam. Now, people who are of pure nature, through the in, indulgence in Torah, the diving into Torah, complete, surrounding yourself completely by Torah philosophy, you can look through from one end of the world to the next. You're granted unique visions, right? You talk about stories of people who had power of blessing and tzaddikim tzitkaniyos who what they could do 
would be something that, that we don't understand. It sounds almost like the tales of like another world. The answer is, is that if you had full access to purity, so nothing else would take it down. You think about it, right? If I was engaged in an action where part of the motivation was about me or about um, about you know, proving someone wrong or jealousy or kavod or money or things like that, at the end of the day, there are forces in the world that pull pull the action down and make it less less successful. That's why someone who tries to pursue kavod will never get kavod; they get the opposite. It's the, it's a guarantee. But if there was a pure action, hundred percent pure, it would be guaranteed to be successful. Right? That's the that's the formula. It would not fail, and therefore, a person with with that sort of organ news in them can see from one end of the world to the other end of the world. When there's obviously there's probably many meanings of what they mean by that, but when you when you say like I can see from one end, to one yeah. End of the you mean like what Moshe when he looked left and right? Like you mean so Moshe like looking left and right was like was looking at, I think he was looking either in the future. Yeah, like one idea. That's one matter. The other is he was just looking. He was there. He was saying, right. "Am I going to get in trouble?" But, but like, is that what you mean about Adam? Like that he's he's looking to see what was like, um, what good things were they doing? Or yeah, like, yeah. He looked into the future. So we don't mean like he could see the text and, and, and no, no, no. No, like we're like you know Russia from yeah. home in Alaska. <laughs> <Seeing around. laughs> why don't they? Why don't you? Why are they saying it cryptically? Well, it sounds like it was he had a full vision of the world. There was nothing else to see in the world. So, so the Medrash explains that it meant he saw the future. He looked into the future. One end of the world means the olam, olam le olam. We say le olam. Olam means world, but it means le olam. It also means time. Right. Yeah. Right. So he was perfect when he was made. Yeah. Like like an animal. Animals created perfectly. They have no yet. They don't have. Animals don't have. Um, yeah. yeah. There's no bad in animals. They're designed to do what they do. Like a tree is designed to do what it so does. So the snake was created not perfect. So perfect. So, so yeah, there was the, whatever the nachash represents. It was something that had ulterior motives, had selfish motivations, or it represents the pure animalistic side. And we embrace that, right? We embrace that animalistic side. There are midrash chazal that describe um, describe uh, the the nachash as sort of um, not just saying, "Oh, take a take an apple," which is sort of the, the 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 clean version of what's going on. But midrash may actually describe it as a, sort of a seduction uh, of kava, right? And um, and if that's the case, that means that that mankind sort of caved into our uh, more animalistic side, um, which we were supposed to be above. We were, we were supposed to be above animals, but to a certain extent I was saying before, like Rav Cook says, that animals were pure animals were designed to do exactly what they were doing, and therefore they were also on a very high level. And we were on a high level also, right? There was a, but there's a potential for human beings to reduce the animal kingdom as well too. And I mean, Joshua Chazal described that depravity that, that uh, spread throughout the world in the time of Noah, was that the human human condition changed the, the behavior of animals around them. You can actually train a dog, beautiful creature created by God. You could train a dog to kill someone. Mm -hmm. How's that possible? Because human human behavior can actually we're the masters of of the world, and we can change the conduct of um, creatures around us, or more so children and people. You know, we can, we can do that as well. Influence behavior. So the the I think the key here is that we were created with a certain sense of purity. Um, and with that came the ability to be unlimited. That we saw into the future, we saw into the past. We we, we saw all of the ramifications of what would happen. And we lechol yomtov. So where did that purity go? Right? The purity left us just as when Moshe Rabbeinu holds the luchos and he sees the masa, the action of the chet ha'ega. What happens to the luchos? Because I'll say they dropped from his hand. He was carrying thick stones that were many tvachim in height, six tvachim in height. That means it's six. Right, height and very thick uh, uh, in terms of uh, several tefachim in terms of thickness. Stone like that would weigh completely thousands of pounds, right? And he carried that himself. Uh, and then when when he saw it, and it was no problem, it floated. And then when he when he saw what he saw, the luchos just fell out of his hands. It wasn't he didn't throw them according to one approach. They became heavy. They became heavy on him. And the 
the sages described the letters sort of left from the stones and all the lightness, all the, all the, uh, like a volcanic rock suddenly became like a very heavy stone, kind of cement, and just dropped to the ground. So that ability to be sort of supernatural is associated with purity. Um, now every yontif not only has a special light, but every yontif has a special mesechet in Gemara, special Torah that draws out its light. Which deals with the topics of and the laws of that day. Moshe established a rule that on the holiday you should ask the laws of that holiday. You should ask a shaila. You should investigate. Um, you should investigate uh, questions in that area. I'll just share an amazing Torah about asking a shaila. The we sometimes think that asking a question is a, is a sign of um, sign of, 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 of a lack of knowledge, a weakness, right? So asking a shaila is supposed to, so um, there's a question on this week's Pasha that Yehuda, uh, that rather rather um, Ruvain um, approaches the pit where he sees Yosef's no longer in the pit. He comes back, right? He went, whatever he went, he comes back and he finds he's not there. So he thinks that maybe they killed him. So he tears his clothing. So Rashi says something bizarre. Rashi says he tore his clothing because he had just mixed the beds up. Remember, he switched the beds. Oh, he had... Uh, he thought that it was his, he wanted the night should be his mother's night, not Bill's night. So for Yisachar, the reward Yisachar was born, the Dudaim that were brought, where it were switched. And as a result, uh, yeah, he he was entitled to switch the, the beds or the tents. But Yaakov's night, instead of being with Bilhah, went to his mother Leah. Right? And so Yisachar is born. So now the question is, right, um, He that was considered to be a sin, like, don't get involved in your father's business, right? Mm -hmm. So he tears his clothing there. So Rav Salavich Exal asked, why does he tear his clothing about switching the father's bed? He feels bad about what he's done when he sees that his brother Yosef is not in the pit. One has nothing to do with the other. It's a great question. So he says something incredible. That by right, it was possible that he, that he was correct when he switched the beds, meaning it was the right, it was the correct uh, order of things. But the problem is he, it wasn't his place. He should have asked his father. It was his father. a question that should have been posed to his father, who was the most knowledgeable person. And obviously, it was, you know, he also had an ulterior motive. So, um, so he didn't ask a question. What happened with the, the boys by the pit? They believed that Yosef was a din rodef, meaning he had vowed to rule over them. He predicted their demise at his hands. He was a dangerous person. He was becoming a dangerous person. So the brothers got together and they formed a bait din. And they said, this boy deserves death. Well, they may have been justified for the things that you did. If someone threatens your existence, your even your, your finances, right? there's a din rodef. And so it's possible that they paskin that he deserved a misa, or at least banishment to be sold into slavery. He was a threat. So what's wrong? They did the right thing. The answer is that they didn't ask the greatest sage of the time. They didn't ask Yaakov. Now, of course, they had ulterior motives. Yaakov would have been had ulterior motives as well. I always learned they were just... Well, that's the simple, the simple reading. Where behind it, you have the lumdus. Behind it is the is the is the psaktin. So this is a little bit of a lumdusha. It's a bit, of, it's a bit of a yeshivasha. It's a bit of a yeshivasha response. It's not like shot. It's like the nice. This is a nice approach. They would say in yeshivas. I was thinking that though, because they were tzaddikim. Yeah, yeah. So that's what that's what motivates this. It also fits with halacha. So they should have asked Yaakov. Why didn't they ask Yaakov? The answer is you could be right, but if you don't ask a shaila to the most knowledgeable person who's present there in the moment, and even if you're correct. You're wrong. So, says Rav Salvechik, well, why did they do such a thing? Well, very simple. They saw that Reuven did the same thing. Mm -hmm. So Reuven comes back to the pit. He sees what they've done. He says, I caused this. Yeah. And he tears his clothing. Mm -hmm. like what, a, what a sharp Torah. What a great Torah. Is the typical older Torah. That's what you do. That's why That's why we fast. That's the Bechor. The Bechor influences other people. The Bechor is always the most... Are you no. No, no, no. I, I influence people negatively despite not being. <laughs> okay, so Moshe Tikin Lahem. So Moshe established every holiday. It's been a tangent day, but fun tangents. Moshe established that every holiday we are Sholin Vidorsh and Vinyane Shalyom, that we ask questions about the nature of 
the holiday. Hilchos Pesach, but Pesach, the laws of Pesach and Pesach, the laws of Atzeres, but Atzeres, the Hilchos Chag, the Chag, and the laws of Sukkot and Sukkot. Kidama Tamtis Ikroshel Yom Tov Tamun B'Seches of Seches Binyani Vilchosav. Called the Dama Tamtis. When you shecht an animal, it's an interesting expression. I don't know how they call this, but the first cut brings out a spurt of blood, right? That's like the Dama Tamtis. Um, how they translate that? <laughs> okay. okay, but that is found in the that's the the essence of of the lifeblood of a creature is found in that holiday. Tamun Masechas of Sekas Binyani Achosav, and it's found buried in the Masechas that deals with those laws. Iker Oroshel Hayom, the light of that day, was placed in the Divrei Torah. Now he says, we talked about light being placed in Hanukkah. We talked about light being placed in Sadiq in the 36th Sadiq, light being placed in the holidays. But really, that main light, he believes, is expressed through the Torah, the Torah of that day. Every single holiday has Masechas. Shabbos. We actually have two Masechas in Shabbos, two very large Masechas. Shabbos and Erevin, the one we're doing now in Mishnais, and the next one we're doing in Mishnais. Laws of Erev itself, even though most of Masech Shabbos and Mishnais deal with what you can't carry, we have an entire Masech about building an Erev, constructing an Erev. So there's a lot about carrying, probably the Malacha we can encounter the least, because in our communities we have an Erev, so we don't bother to ask these questions. Hasek is Ruban Kikol and Binyane Shabbos Kodesh. Mokhen Pesach, Pesach is Pesachim. Sokes Yom Sech Zogar, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Yom Yomah. Purim, we have Megillah. Shvuos, we have a Kesher, Mesuyam, Mesech, Shvuos. Shvuos, there is a connection to Shvuos, even though he goes, Shvuos is actually about oaths. It's about Mesech, about oaths. But nonetheless, any Odea Bediuk is Makor Lekach. I know that there's a Mesech, I know that there's an idea between the Kesher, a connection between Shvuos and, and, and the holiday Shvuos. Ach uv dahu shemachzorim l'chag ha-shvuos mutfeses m'sech ha-shvuos. We know that if you open up the old machzorim that were created for holiday of shvuos, you'll find mishnayis for m'sech ha-shvuos, which has nothing to do with it. What is m'sech ha-shvuos about? Taking oaths, like nindarim vows. But since the name is the same, they put it in there. Kinoshi yasoshu ma'amun ar-sinai u'mashinasu b'mushboin v'omdin. Why? Here's the connection. Because shvuos, we receive the Torah. We, we, we commemorate the reception of the Torah. And... What happened on Harsinai is we were mushboyin we were, we were forced to take an oath about our status regarding the Torah. And, and when that happened, right, we took that oath, right? So we were mushboyin ve'omdin. Therefore, we learned Masechah's Shavuos about oaths on Shavuos. That's his connection there. Okay. M'kena Shavuos, Mawadim, Yeshnu Masechah Tzimcharos, Halimud, Ba, Hu, Ba'etzim Nishma Sayom, Benu. And you want to know the soul of the day? Learn that Masechta. I will share one interesting idea that connects us back to Hanukkah. When is the main light hidden? We already said, which holiday? 36. The hidden light is Hanukkah. Which holiday is the only holiday that doesn't have Masechta? Other than Yom Atzmaut? It didn't exist yet. It's Hanukkah. Hanukkah does not have Masechta. There is not a Masechta. There's not Mishnayas. There's no Gemara. There's, Mishnayas. there's one Mishnah that mentions Hanukkah. So how do you learn about it? How do we learn about it? There's about three pages in Masech Shabbos that deal with the laws of Hanukkah, and from there, the rest is, is developed in the halacha. That's it. Then there's a, there's a mention in the Gemara in, in, in there's a Mishnah that talks about it in Shabbos, and then there's a, um, which talks about whether you, if you're going to purchase candles of Shabbos versus candles of Hanukkah, right, which comes first, right? Um, it's interesting that uh, if one goes out, what do you do? Right? What? Out, what do, you do? That's, that's in the Gemara. The Gemara deals with the origins. The, that's not, it's all in, um, it's all in the Halacha. It's not in the, it's not in the Gemaras. There is a Mishnah, there's a, a Masechta, there's a Gemara in Baba Kam, I think it is, it talks about what happens, or one of the Babas, what happens if you have a candle that was sitting by your window and an animal comes by and has like a, a bundle of hay on its back and it brushes against the fire and burns the building, who's Chayev? Mm-hmm. Who's responsible? That's near Hanukkah. So Hanukkah itself is a hidden holiday. The laws are not even in the... In the, in the, in the uh, and yet, it's the secret, says Rav Huttner of Torah Shabbat Pav, oral tradition, the hidden Torah, the Torah that's passed down orally and not in written form because it's the hidden light. So the idea is that Torah... Um, and why is, the, why is the oral tradition? Because what the Greeks and the Hellenists... 
what do they try to do? Don't study Torah, right? Try to take that away. So it was. So it was in that very time that we have the birth of we have forget Torah, and then the Torah is renewed through machloket, through confusion and, and argument, right? And that arguing is the birth of the zugot pairs, and from there we have Shammai and Hillel, proliferation of Torah. That more Torah came out through the banishment of Torah than would have existed beforehand. Okay. So we, we've kind of covered a lot of interesting tangents, but now we have this idea that in the holidays, we have the, the Torah of the holiday is the essence, the soul of that holiday. Man in his nature is more comes from two parts, a body and a soul. The body is the, is the, the gesh gashmius part that in it, we find the soul, which is the source of its life. The body is bones. And the soul is held by the blood. What holds up the body? The bone structure. What holds up the, the soul, meaning the, the breath and the, 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 the heartbeat and all that stuff, the nefesh, that's called the blood. The blood keeps the circulatory system. For blood is the soul. That's why if you cut someone on Shabbos. You can't cut someone in general that's considered a chavala unless you're helping them, healing them. Then it's fine. Like putting a leech on their neck to lower their fever. Old modern medicine preaches. There was a great SNL skit from years ago called Lamprey. It's like instead of Lassie, and he had a pet Lamprey. And the kid like had like, you know, he was like pale as a ghost and he had like these, these leeches sucking on his... <laughs> um. Anyway, so, so what was I saying? So yeah, so the body, so that's why if you cut someone on Shabbos, it's like, it's called the malach of shochet, slaughtering, because every drop of blood that comes out is like killing them a little bit. Or was it death by a thousand cuts, literally? The body is the wellspring from which the soul emerges. Even bruising a person is considered a show, a malach shochet. Ulam kesh misbonim lo omak roin. When we look in depth, we'll see ki yesh no chelak no safata. There's an additional portion of man. Yesh guf unishama, nishama la nishama. There's a soul to the soul. Matinu lakach ba devere kanmon mesefer kinuim. Nefesh, ruach, nishama. Here are the different parts of the soul. There's the nefesh, the ruach, the spirit, and the soul, right? Which is basically the guf, the nefesh, the ruach, the body, the soul, and the spirit. <clears throat> All those things mean the same thing, but they are different components of the soul. So actually has five parts. The nevesh, ruach, neshama, the taya, and yechida. We don't talk about those already. Those are the higher parts of the soul, right? the, the parts you connect to only when you're in a, sort of a transcendental, uh, a transcendent state. But those are the very high parts of the soul. But nevesh, ruach, neshama, which that's... Um, um, Steve Naren reminds me that his name Naren probably comes back to Nefesh Ruach Neshama. Naren. That's probably where it comes from. What's the difference between Ruach and Neshama? Um, nefesh. He's going to explain a little bit what these oh, are. Ikr Nekuda Ika. Guf, the body, the Kavanala Mivne Chitzoni, is the external body, right? Is the structure of man. Yadayim Raglayim, the hands, the legs, the Anayim, the eyes, the Oznayim, the ears, the 248 limbs. In that we have a neshama a living soul, which is the chiyut person, right? If you were to do a, a frontal lobotomy or if you were to do a brain exchange, right, a brain surgery and give them a different brain and somehow worked, it would be a different person. They would look the same, but they would be a totally different person, right? They would have different uh, different voice and a different, uh, maybe the same voice, but they would have a different, a different soul and they would think differently and they would have different values and they would think differently about themselves and have different talents. So that's not, the person is not the body. When you see a person, it's not what they look like and we have to get over those things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, you say, I don't like the way my, my son is dressing. It's not who they are. It's totally not who they are. And if you really wanted to connect to your child, and I'm talking to myself here, you would be beyond that. You'd be above that. Mm -hmm. right? People who are gender you think the um, the wrong right, so this is a very, I mean, this is, this is a very interesting field. 
um, there is a notion of, of an ashama sort of leaving us and hovering above us at night. You know, Tzadok talks about that when we sleep, that we dive in the morning, that we thank Hashem that he gave our soul back to us. But yeah, there is the possibility that um, there's an exchange so, or, or, or foreign souls get attached to our own souls. People with split personalities. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, there are all sorts of things that happen that are not supposed to happen. And HaKadosh Baruch has a reason for it, right? Why is someone born with Chas Hashem, a physical deformity, a mental illness, um, confusion, thinking one thing that doesn't match the reality of the world around them. Those are hard things to deal with. I'm not, I'm, this is not about recommended uh, treatment or recommended responses. It merely as those things exist, and clearly God is involved in that process, right? There's no question in my mind. Hashem's in charge of everything, right? To say that, to say that uh, the way a person's thinking or feeling is is against the feeling a certain way is against God, is itself a statement against God, right? Now, acting a certain way against God is a different story. Because the goof is given to us. Right. And what we do with those emotions and feelings is a different story. And certain people have higher challenges than others. But I think that thinking a certain way and feeling a certain way, certainly there was some something happened, right? Hashem did something. It's a beautiful idea. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult idea, Very right? Beautiful. Because because why does God? But then you have to understand, right? That's not just gender issues. It's all desires. Someone who's born with, it, with, 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 with just always thinking that someone else is, is 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 better than them and always jealous of other people, right? Why God put that desire in a person? If I walk around every house is nicer than my house, every car is nicer than my car, and everyone's spouse is better and everyone's child is better, that feeling also is a, so what do you have to do with that feeling, right? You have to think about it. And we can't compare one desire to another. We can't because they're all different and they're all challenges. But there's a way of a Torah and we have to try to figure out how to take what we've been given and try to, as best as possible, keep the Torah. Not an easy task. Um, Matt requires tremendous amount of love and empathy and, and understanding and really caring for people. Um, I don't have I don't have good answers, but I do know that I do believe that there's a that there's a there's an idea that the soul is put in the body and it's it's a special, you know, it's supposed to be a fit, but who knows. When parents come to you with these kind of challenges, I think giving them that explanation is very possible. Could be, could be. Um, the first thing that I always try to do is what would you know? I put myself in that in their in their chair, you know. And parents don't always want the same answer, so you have to understand that also, right? Some parents are looking for um, some parents are looking for comfort validation or advice and different ideas and you have to know that and some people are not looking for what a rabbi has to say either so you have to also know that <laughs> i i don't have i don't have the right answers i just know i i know I, you figure out the wrong answers and then you check those off the list and do those next time <laughs> anyway um but besoch is an neshama of a neshama that's hidden it's deep in the man hergesh shel kedusha and inside that there's a feeling an inner spark of holiness that is alive in all of us and what is that spark? It's calling on you to rise above your natural urges, right? If it's stinginess, then you have this little pintula uh, spark of an ashama that's calling out to you and saying, rise above that. And that's that's the the physical urges are telling you not to. And mitzvos are also multivariate, right? So pashtus yeshtam shlosh chalakin. There are three kinds: gof neshama, neshama, neshama. There's the body, there's the soul, and there's the soul of the soul. There are actually five levels of mitzvos. There are action mitzvos, ma'isa, dibor, speaking mitzvos, right? Brachos, right? All such things. You have. By the way, what's the only mitzvah? What's the only bracha that we say deraisa from the Torah? Only one bracha from the Torah. After you have bread, you're going to, you're kind of my zone. The chalta vasavata bracha, that's the only deraisa bracha. Shema is not a bracha. Shema is a lima de Torah, whatever, it contains the mitzvahs. Could be that birchos bracha recite for learning Torah might be deraisa, probably not. Meaning it says, it says, the Pazak says, Kishim Hashem Eka Habagudal Kenu. We learn from there that you're supposed to call out Shem Hashem before you study Torah. This is benching, the actual words of benching, because you have to write it. No, 
No, no, no, no. no. It, it, it appears in the Gemara, but the mitzvah to bench in, to, to bench after so you what eat. Would, what would Moshe say after he had bench? I, I don't know what his blessing was. Oh, but 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 he but, had a mitzvah. Right, there was a mitzvah in the Torah. Right, right. The the formulation of the words, like in tefillah, were created over time. They appear in the Gemara, or they were. There was a Masora tradition that was the blessing that could have been from Moshe, but we don't write like Torah Shabbat. Right. Anyway, so we have words. Thoughts. You can do mitzvahs with your thoughts. Ratzon. Desire. And look what he says here, the last one. Simcha. Joy. Like your, like your dog. Right? <laughs> Nivar and Achazah. We're going to explain each one. Maisa, action, is the external part. Dibor, speech, is, right? And machshav and thoughts and ratzon and will and simcha and joy are the inner dimension of the mitzvah. Right? So let's see. Each one is deeper and deeper. Wow. Because words are certainly less deep than, than maisa, which is external. Action is totally outside. But words start from the inside and they go outside. Joy is the, is the, is the deepest of all. Vomitzos. This is a real Hasidish soul here. Rabbi Nachman Abreslov in the Chadish, the greatest mitzvah that's not explicitly written in the Torah is Simcha, and the greatest Avera that's not explicitly written in the Torah is Atzos, is sadness. So they're not written in the Torah, but Rabbi Nachman would be very into be happy. You know, don't worry, be happy. Rastafari in there. Yari used to say, All of the things we have come from the joy of a mitzvah. The joy of fulfilling a mitzvah. I am rejoicing over your mitzvah. When he would read the Megillah, the Arizal felt it was like acquiring huge amounts of money. And this is the building of a Maisa mitzvah. When a person comes to fulfill a mitzvah, they have to fulfill all of its portions. Maisa is the pu'ula, chitzon is the external action. Gashmis, the, fit, the physical part. Dibor is, is, the, is the bracha, like a bracha, or dibri Torah. Machshava is the thought, the kavana that you have to have when you do a mitzvah. Ratzon is the will to want to do it, do it to do it right, not just like, oh, you're forcing someone to do it, and they, you twist their arm. And simcha, is the joy that you were able to serve Hashem. It's the purest of all things. It's not just ratzon, it's not just want to, it's the satisfaction. These are the five parts of a mitzvah, and we have five parts of the soul. The nefesh, the ruach, the neshama, that's the nefesh is the body, basically. The ruach is the is the ruach wind, right? That's the words. Neshama is the thoughts. The ratzon is the chaya. And the Yechidah, the oneness of God, is achieved through Simcha, through joy. And with that, we'll stop. What an amazing section. And uh, we'll continue soon.